So it's been two weeks since my last article and it has been, to say the least, a very interesting two weeks. First of all, I want to say thank you to those of you who reached out to me about the Tom Waits recording. Um, and most of you are very complimentary. Thank you very much for that. Um, some people even suggest a ways of trying to get hold of Tom Waits. That hasn't happened, as in I've tried, but it hasn't been successful. But that's OK, too. Look, it's uh, it's out there. People enjoyed it. And for those of you who are very complimentary about it, I want to say thank you. I did mention in that article about um, my mental health and the creativity being good for my mental health and not being able to get hold of Tom Waits, maybe not being so good for my mental health. Uh, interestingly, the compliments that come from putting that kind of thing into the world are very challenging for me. My en- mental health challenges are based on um, a lack of self-esteem and all for those kind of things, while very, very welcome, can also be a little bit challenging. Uh, I'm not going to say that those people reaching out and being nice and kind and complimentary played a role in what I'm about to talk about because they didn't. Um, and if they did, it was a very, very tiny little piece. I also said in the last article that I was struggling to write and that's why I had done an audio file for that article. Um, with hindsight, the not being able to physically write in fact was an indication that my mental health was maybe in a little bit of a a struggling space Um, that's one indication I mean there's so much going on the time of year lots and lots of people and I'm one of them struggle with the change in the weather at this time of year as the dark comes earlier therefore the dark in the mind can come a little bit earlier I was extremely busy too busy with hindsight with lots of things, the business, creativity, trying you know, convince myself I needed to get this done and that done and this done and more done. Um, and I kind of backed myself into a corner on that. I mean, like lots of other people, with the current scenario, with the COVID and the restrictions and the worries about, you know, where are we going to be in two months, three months, six months? That's been on my mind a little bit and I've been a little bit concerned about financial issues. Not that I have any great financial issues, but when you have a brain that can fixate on things, that kind of thing can be a problem. Anyway, look, that all culminated um, on last Monday week with a little bit of a crash and burn scenario for me. Not unusual. Um, when I say that, it doesn't come very often anymore and it doesn't come any way like it used to. But this time around, it was difficult. The weekend, the Saturday was difficult. The Sunday was a little bit more difficult. And the Monday was literally crash and burn. Um, I'm so, so grateful that I have ways of coping with that scenario nowadays. So on the Monday, um, at about five o'clock, I headed out for a walk and I was gone for about three hours, maybe a little bit more than that. And I spend a lot of that time reaching out to the people that I know will answer a phone call and will be able to talk to me on the same level when I'm saying I don't feel very well, my head is a little bit mashed up, uh, I'm feeling unwell. Um, So thank you to those people, Paul, Terry um, and the others who will always answer that call and will ring back the following day and the day after and just say how are you doing. The good news is I'm doing much, much better. Um, The decisions on that day where I need to simplify my life. So I backed away from the business for a while. I backed away from pressurising myself. I've done a lot of walking since. I've done an awful lot of listening to music. Nick Cave's Greatest Hits is definitely worth checking out, guys. Full of magical stuff. Um, Right at the top of that list is, of course, Into My Arms. But close behind it is Love Letter, which is an amazing piece of work. So Nick Cave has been on the list, David Bowie's been on the list, the Bombay Bicycle Club have been on the list, and many playlists of just favourites. Music is an amazing, amazing healer, soother, Uh, certainly for me. I've done a lot of reading since, I've done an awful lot of looking after myself, and by that I mean just taking it easy, not fretting about work, not working too hard. Uh, And there are some of my coping mechanisms, and of course staying in touch with other people uh, is hugely important in that regard as well. And, yeah, thankfully, I'm reaping the benefits of it. I feel an awful lot better. Um, But it did, that little crash and burn. Little. (laughs) It's interesting how we minimise things. Anyway, that crash and burn, you know, focused my mind and reminded me of how fragile we can be, how fragile I can be, and certainly brought into my head how difficult this time of year is for an awful lot of people. Look, we're heading into Christmas. Christmas is a fantastic time of year in lots of ways, but it can be hugely challenging for people who have a mental health issue there's this you know everybody's in great mood it's all so magical everything is wonderful and if you're not really feeling like that um which lots of us wouldn't be at this time of year then if you feel almost pressurized to feel like that um and that can be very tough on the the head as well 
you know, January is the time of year where the suicide rates are the highest in Ireland. Um, there's a festival runs out of Dublin called the First Fortnight Festival, specifically uh, in the first two weeks of January, specifically called called the First Fortnight because that is the time of year when the suicide rates in the country are the highest. And that obviously is connected to the fact that during December lots of people are struggling um, and probably for lots and lots of different reasons. If I'm honest, then normally around the start of December I normally have a dip, um, which can be quite difficult. I'm hoping the dip, um, the little meltdown, crash, whatever you want to call it, I had last week, is that the, is it for this year? It may not be, but I mean I will be planning and I'm putting into practice ways of keeping myself as light as I can and as easy as I can in order to avoid that one. However, what those thought processes did when I was sitting thinking about this time of year and how difficult it can be for people, it made me realise again um, just how difficult this time of year is and it reminds me of how, you know, over the years I've had difficult periods. So what I'm going to share with you for this article is a poem I wrote a number of years ago just prior to Christmas, maybe the second week in December when I was having a dip and again I had gone to comp my coping mechanisms, the main one being walking and I had gone out for a walk and I headed towards the Lee Fields which is one of my favourite places in the world. It was about six or seven o'clock in the evening so it was pitch black um, and as I reached the river something very interesting happened. Now I will say before I go any further that I have never been suicidal um, I have been very depressed, I have been deeply depressed, I know that with hindsight I realise I was much more depressed than I ever thought I was actually, but I've never actually been suicidal. I've had what's called transient suicide thoughts, which is, you know, driving along in the car and the truck coming towards thinking, I wonder what would happen if I drove into the front of that, and that sounds very dramatic, but that thought would be gone, you know, seconds later, and that's referred to as a transient suicide thought. And I'm saying all this because I don't want anybody to be in a position where they think, oh, you know, he's been suicidal, he must know what I've been through, he's been suicidal, that must have been really difficult. I've never been suicidal. This poem, however, probably touches on those notions because what happened to me when I arrived at the river was I literally heard a voice in my head that said, go on, jump. And at the time I was taken aback, obviously I was taken aback. I was never jumping, I'm 100%, but I kind of went, wow, what's that about? Carried on with my walk. It would have come back into my head a couple of times during the walk. I was probably out for about an hour. And each time it came back, I just thought, well, that's interesting. Um, and then the following morning when I woke, it was the first thought in my head again, not the idea of jumping in the river, but the, the thought process about, well, what was that actually about? So I went to my computer and I spent about 20 minutes putting this piece together, got a little bit of editing a little bit later on. No doubt about that. Um, and I don't read it very often and I don't utilise it very often, even when I'm performing mainly because it's titled Christmas Message, so it gives it a time of year, which means that, you know, you're not going to be reading a Christmas message poem in January or February or May or June. It'll be a bit like throwing on um, the fairy tale in New York at a 21st birthday party in July. People love the song, but they look at you going, what are you actually doing? Um, so this is called Christmas Message, and I'm reading it today. I'm going to put a little bit of a background on it. You can probably hear the river gurgling away there in the background at the moment. So I'm going to put, you know, kind of play with that and increase that. And the, the idea really is I just want to say to people out there, this is a very difficult time of year for lots and lots and lots of people. And if you are one of those people um, who have in the past had a tendency to have a dip at this time of year, or if you're somebody who for the first time is feeling a little dip at this time of the year, um, find find ways, and you can find ways, to ease the pressure on yourself. Reach out to people, whether that's friends, family, a helpline. Uh, have a conversation with somebody about how you're feeling. Write it down. Play some music, the music you love. Get a piece of paper and some pencils or a canvas and some paint and slash on to the paper or the canvas how you feel. Try and find a way to get that pressure that is, you know, building up inside you, out of you. There is no doubt that that old phrase, a problem shared as a problem halved, is actually true. It may not quite be half, but let's not get into the maths of it. There's no doubt that when you share a problem, uh, particularly with somebody else, then it is definitely eased. And there are loads and loads and loads and loads of supports out there. Yes, we hear all the talk about a mental health crisis in the country. That's true. Yes, we definitely need more supports. Yes, that's absolutely true. 
but there are supports there helplines websites chat boxes and like i said friends family somebody close to you whether that's a family member or a really good friend will listen to you will hear you i have no doubt about that so please if you are struggling a little bit if you are do your best you can with yourself soften how you're feeling talk to somebody find a way to get some help um and maybe, just maybe, you might find a little bit of solace in the poem I'm about to read. It's very dark at the start, I will say that. It does lighten towards the end, so stay with it. And in lots of ways, in lots of ways, I really want to share it to you because the last two lines of it really is what it's all about. You need the rest of the poem to get some context with the last two lines. That's really what it's all about. So thanks again for those of you who reached out the last time. Stay safe out there, stay well out there. Uh, and I'll talk to you again in two weeks' time when we'll be doing some form, I would imagine, of Christmas article. So thank you. The river called me today. Jump, it said. Just float away. In the swell of my love, I will hold you like a glove, pull you down into the deep where forever you can sleep and forget all of the pain that has driven you insane. I will take you as you are, on your feet or in your car, sing a shanty as you sink and together we will sink as one into the ocean where love is not an ocean and bliss you cannot miss will shine from every fish that will feast upon your soul while the tide around you rolls to commemorate the way you existed day to day in a world you did not fit for you were never well equipped to deal with all the hate the world endlessly creates but love is not the sea said i though i could see how the beauty of the ocean could soothe my pained emotions and free me from the weight so many people's hate has forced into my mind making life a daily grind no love is not the sea and the sea is not for me so thank you for the offer you so tenderly have proffered but i will go now on my way to face at least one more day for love it is forgiving and for that you must be living